In this session, we'll be basically discussing about the details of reproduction. As the name suggests, reproduction, re, it's for again. Production means producing something. Now, what is happening? The organism is producing something like itself. Why? Because the lifespan of all organisms are fixed. When they will have to die some or the other day, they need to reproduce and they need to form something like them. The definition says, it is the production of new individuals of same kind by the parents. So they are reproducing so as to maintain their generation. Now, what happens that there are living beings, most of the living beings, they will show you the reproduction. But there are living beings like mules, worker bees or infertile human couples. You can also have some uh, humans, those are with the disorders like Klinefelter syndrome or Turner syndrome. They are living but they are never having the reproduction. They cannot reproduce. That is what the reproduction becomes as non-defining property of the livings. The growth, if you can consider, we have already talked about growth. The growth was happening in all livings, but it was also happening in non-living. So because of it was happening in non-living, we could not consider it as a defining property. Similarly, when reproduction is happening in livings, but there are few more livings like them, like infertile human beings or mules or worker bees, it is the reproduction is not happening in them. So reproduction cannot be taken as defining property of livings. Now there are two modes of reproduction, one is sexual and the next is asexual. In asexual reproduction, the reproduction will be uniparental. You don't require any other parent to come and reproduce with. So this particular reproduction, asexual, it's because of with this because without the gamete formation and fusion. So here it is uniparental. But sexual reproduction is mainly biparental. You require two parents. Those will be sending out their gametes. And after the gametes will be fusing. So the gametes will be fusing and they will be forming the zygote. So this is mainly uniparental and this is mainly biparental. But sexual reproduction can also be uniparental. Let me tell you how. Most of the bisexual plants you see. The bisexual plants are having male and female. Both of the gametes presenting on the same plant. So the male of same plant can fert, fert, fertile with what you call the female of the same plant. So that time it becomes uniparental. Mostly it is biparental but sometimes it can also occur uniparental. There in asexual reproduction fusion of gametes is absent. But here the fusion of gametes which we call syngamy. The fusion of gametes it's called syngamy. So syngamy is actually present in sexual reproduction. The syngamy is absent in case of asexual reproduction. If you can talk about asexual reproduction, this particular method is simple and quick, while sexual reproduction is complex and slow. There are few among the methods of asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction, basically you need to talk about in class 12, where we'll be reading sexual reproduction in flowering plants. But we'll be here to just discuss about few details of asexual reproduction. One can be fission, it can be budding, it can be true regeneration, or it can be fragmentation. Now what happens in fission that you may have one particular organism. The organism, it's one unicellular. The organism, first of all, it grows in size. And after growing in size, this organism will divide like this. So there will be two organisms now. So fission accomplishes the formation of two daughter cells. Both of the daughter cells are of same sizes. So this happens in fission. Now this fission, what I have represented here is binary fission because one cell is dividing into two cells. But it can also be multiple fission that one cell can divide into many cells. Examples for the organisms those are doing the fission are bacteria, algae and amoeba. When you look forward for the budding, what happens in budding? One cell, it develops a bud. Now this bud is actually called an outgrowth. It is called bud, it is called protuberance or it is called an outgrowth. So what happens? This particular bud will be keep on taking the nourishment from this parent cell and it will be growing in the size. This particular bud will be growing in the size. When it actually grows in size, it tries to separate out from the parent body. So the parent body and this particular 
new bud which has been developing and after development it has formed the new organism so both of the organisms are afresh now so you have like seen the budding part of it which actually happens in yeast and hydra when you talk about fragmentation in fragmentation when complete body of the organism it divides into many fragments and each of the new this particular fragment will be forming a new individual so this happens in fragmentation which is seen in filamentous algae fungus and protonema stage of bryophyte now protonema stage of bryophyte bryophytes are the one among the plants now bryophytes the one stage comes which is called protonema it basically happens in mosses this is the initial stage of mosses to grow this protonema divides into pieces and each of these pieces will be forming a new individual what happens in true regeneration which is seen in planaria which is a flat form what happens some part of this planaria is torn out and this particular part will regenerate this particular part with the lost body part will be regenerated so that the new organism remain intact this is called true regeneration when you talk about the fission and budding i have already told you in fission what happens there is this one cell which grows in the size and divides into two cells so there are two cells forming what happens in budding is this cell it develops a bud the bud can be exogenous or can be endogenous now with this bud it will be developing the bud develops and once it is it is developing the bud will separate out as the new organism what you see here what you see here the differences are right here here you can see both of the daughter cells the sizes are equal the cytoplasm distribution is equal but you can see here daughter cells the sizes are dissimilar if you can see the division of cytoplasm is unequal now this particular bud which i have already told you this is an outgrowth or bud i have told you this is called protuberance so protuberance is present here the protuberance it's present here but you will not see any of the type of protuberance is here so the protuberance is absent out here if you can also see this parent cell is surviving after the division like parent cell is intact one daughter cell is formed so parent cell is intact here in the budding but there is no meaning of what you call parent cell after the fission but the two new cells are not having this particular parent cell meaning so parent cell disappears after the fission now two important things because we have already discussed about these two properties of living now growth and reproduction so you need to understand something what happens first of all both of them were not the defining property they are not the defining property of livings so they cannot be considered as defining property of livings because i've told you growth was also happening in non living things and reproduction was also not happening in some of the livings now when you talk about unicellular organism unicellular organism it's like this unicellular organism is growing in the size and when it is growing in the size it is dividing into two cells it is what i have told you now if you can see this much part this much part it's called growth but when you look at this part this part it's called reproduction now if you can see something the reproduction is happening because the growth has happened and growth has happened because of that the reproduction is happening so one event is associated with this another event when both of the events are associated that happening of one event is depending upon the happening of another event they are called mutually inclusive events so always remember that growth and reproduction in case of unicellular organisms are mutually inclusive events mutually inclusive means happening of one event will affect the happening of another event now what happens the mutually inclusive is also called synonymous growth synonymous isn't like growth and reproduction are synonymous they are synchronous but when you see higher plants and animals say multicellular organism every time you were like at the age of 3 you were at the age of 13 you must have grown but the people must not have reproduced every time the growth is not accomplished by reproduction so here in our body the events are mutually exclusive when growth and reproduction in multicellular organisms or higher plants and animals are mutually exclusive in unicellular organisms they are mutually inclusive or here they are synchronous here they are non synchronous next class will be detailing you about metabolism